the setting looks like. So we'll be taking a couple of examples. One is from the city of Ottawa and the other is from the example we've been working on uh, for the city of uh, Calgary's uh, intersection of Sorky and Concord Boulevard. So starting with the Ottawa example, um, if you take the example of uh, Baseline Street and Clyde Avenue, um, so basically uh, Baseline is your um, east-west, Clyde is your north-south. Uh, before getting into reading the signal climate plan itself, it's always a good idea to understand some of the particulars of the signals. Just have a quick look or a high level look to see what you can expect prior to reading the signal climate plan itself. Um, in this ex example, you'll start seeing, if you look at the aerial view, um, a dual operation or dual left turns in the northbound and southbound directions. Typically, those um, dual turns we tend to operate in as protected only turns. Uh, for singular turns, of course, depending on volume, uh, speed, um, collisions history, and other characteristics, um, you may end up uh, operating them as permissive phases or as uh, proper or as uh, protected phases. We'll get to understand a little bit once we start looking at the um, uh, Google um, Street View um, and identify some of the elements that are available in the uh, signal itself. Of course, here we do have uh, other features, um, but we'll get to see if we do have um, a signal climate plan aspect for them or not, because sometimes like you'll have a a bus uh, lane that just operates uh, with traffic with the green because it has its own receiving lane as uh, shown in this example here. So going to um, Street View, uh, heading uh, northbound for instance, uh, when you look at the signal aspects in Ottawa, um, you'll start looking at um, your through signal heads and that has three aspects, R, red, amber, uh, and green, you will have a signal head dedicated for the northbound left traffic. And that tells you that expect potentially that you may be able to see either protected operation or proper, and you're also able to operate it just with a through phase um, as a permissive uh, phase if you decide to earn that phase by time of day. So you, you do have the variations and you can see even here uh, with the um, signal, um, it's currently in amber in the northbound, and it's going to be at the same uh, condition in the southbound, and you see it's already red um, in the um, northbound left direction or movement. Um, one more thing to check for, you do have transit lanes here, and I'm not sure if you have another one here. Yep, you do have another one here. So you want to look to see if there is some kind of special operation for that uh, lane. Um, if it has, if this lane has actually its own um, phase, you may start seeing its own signal head somewhere here. But in this case, we don't have that. So, um, in some cases, you'll start seeing an arrow, and um, an arrow is just a straight through uh, movement um, that will not have any uh, complex, um, and uh, is not going to expect um, uh, other directions to. Um, see or look for gaps within this direction. It's just a protected through movement. Um, Ottawa uses um, through arrows, um, but uh, yeah, they are not highly used in, in um, uh, the West in Calgary in, in particular. Every city is a little bit different uh, when you get to uh, signal operations and uh, when you get to see how things are displayed. And we'll get to see actually the difference between Ottawa and uh, Calgary. Um, Ottawa does have both uh, solid and uh, flashing green arrows, uh, while Calgary does not have a solid green arrow, operates a, uh, only a flashing um, green arrow. Uh, one other a, a observation that you can look at is looking at the pedestrian push buttons here. So here we do have the two push buttons for uh, both crosswalks, and that tells you that the signal may have that capacity to call uh, phases depending on pedestrian activation. If, of course, uh, these buttons, all of them are wired. In this case, these are likely wired to uh, the signal. There's not just um, a sound warning uh, when the signal is operation on pit vehicle. Um, of course, you have the flexibility, even if you have a button to operate a pedestrian every cycle. But in this very specific case, uh, we're not sure. We'll look at the plan and we'll find out and identify that. But we do have two push buttons, so you can either um, call pedestrian phase two 
4, pedestrian 4, phase 4, and pedestrian 4, phase 8, and so on and so forth. So this is right, quite valuable information, um, tells me what to expect in the signal planning plan. Um, when we get to read the signal planning plan, Ottawa actually gives you the full um, uh, length of the phase, including uh, your clearances and uh, your red lines. So when you start, uh, you'll get a traffic signal planning report or card um, that is from the city of Ottawa describing the plan per day or during the day that is active during the day. So uh, plan one, AM peak, plan two, off peak, three PM, night will operate plan four and during the weekend has its own uh, plan. These are the different cycle length required to uh, complete operations at maximum recall. So if you have maximum demand from all phases, um, I mean, regardless really, like this is your full cycle. You, this is um, the point where you serve everything or all demands or all phases um, during, our, like, uh, during a rotation within time, pretty much. So um, I'll be able to serve all of my eastbound and westbound lefts um, uh, demands or actually time, uh, east-west time plus northbound left and southbound left time maximum time plus north south time within 120 seconds the offset tells you where the signal starts counting um, its green time so uh, if i'm coordinated east west um, so my east west will start at second 19 in my master clock so this is how you would coordinate between different signals and you'll start seeing um, your phase length, uh, the total time in seconds required to process the whole phase. Um, so um, that includes the green time, includes the um, amber, includes the red time, and also includes the walk time and don't walk time. Uh, of course, the walk time plus the don't walk time plus all red um, and the amber, uh, these uh, should be either equal to um, the full phase length or less than the full phase length. So you'll have the time for uh, every movement and you can correlate that to the uh, sequence itself. So in Ottawa, you'll start with an offset, well, your offset is second 19. So at second 19, your east-west green will start operating. So for 41 seconds, within those 41 seconds, you're serving your north and south crosswalks. So if you go back to the aerial here, your east-west would start at second 19 and will progress for a full phase length of up to 41 seconds. This will be followed by, if you look at the FP node here, that means fully protected. Northbound left and southbound left are fully protected phases and the AMP will operate for up to 21 seconds. Um, 21 seconds, these guys include the clearance time, which is in this case, total of 6.6 seconds. Then you'd be moving on to north-south. And north-south would operate for up to 41 seconds. And the same concept, this includes um, the seven seconds of walk time in Ottawa and 26 seconds of slash don't walk time followed by clearances. And finally, the um, left turn. One thing you would want to note is um, in Ottawa, the indication for actuated phases is a star. So basically the northbound uh, turns, all of them are uh, actuated and that means that it's reliant on detection. Um, and also the north-south uh, traffic. So the extra time, if you end up terminating that phase early, that extra time will ultimately get passed on to the east-west um, uh, phase. And I'm really simplifying, oversimplifying it here. Um, there are so many different ways that you can pass on the time in a coordinated system, um, but that is a whole uh, different story on its own. But for the sake of um, simplification, assume that that extra time gets passed on to the um, east-west um, traffic. Because in, in theory, the majority of traffic volumes are east-west, and that's the main road in this very specific example. Um, as you note, north-south uh, pedestrian movements, uh, and that means the east and west crosswalks, like you'll have to push the, uh, the, the uh, activate the push button to be able to um, 
get pedestrian uh, pedestrian movement, uh, and that means the east and west crosswalks, like you'll have to push the uh, the the uh, activate the push button to be able to um, get pedestrian service. Otherwise, uh, you are not going to get that service. But for east west, you don't have to push the button. If you move a little bit down, um, you will be able to start when every plan starts during um, the, that's the time of day. So uh, past uh, midnight, you are operating your night plan, plan four. Uh, during the AM peak, you start you start that at 6.30 AM and you terminate that at 9.30 and you start plan two. You move from plan two to plan three at 3 PM. And at 6.30 PM, you move back to plan two, finally moving to the night plan at um, 23, um, 30, which is 11.30. So basically from 11.30 all the way to 6.30 a.m., you're operating your uh, night plan, which is 100 seconds. When you don't have an offset, um, it's not a coordinated signal. Or actually the offset can be zero um, in the very uh, specific case. And the idea behind coordination is um, even if you're not coordinating with a series of signals is you may be able to get that extra time within the cycle if you don't get demand from other phases to be passed to the main phase. So yeah, that's really about it in terms of reading signal timing plans um, in, in Calibri. Um, it's, um, the, the city is moving to a, or has recently been um, moving to a template that is kind of similar. Um, it, um, but uh, most of the um, historical or the past intersections, or the example we have now actually is one of the older um, uh, timing plan templates uh, that uh, were used in uh, Calgary. But regardless, um, if you know the information, you should be able to identify how to like identify the important information within your signal timing report or card or um, uh, plans or summary um, and be able to translate that to BSIM uh, timing plans. So if we move on to uh, from the, um, the Ottawa example and uh, get into the Calgary example, um, we'll get to the intersection of Country Hills Boulevard and Sorcy Trail. And very, very similar story. Um, have a quick look at the signal. And I'll uh, put the little man here. So I'm looking at northbound. Um, and if you look at the northbound, we'll just move a little bit here. Your through traffic is R, red, amber, G, green. Um, we use the same displays for permissive left turns. Um, and of course, this um, uh, you want to look at the uh, uh, movement. If, it, if this is a shared left lane and it theoretically or sorry hypothetically um, and you end up uh, not having a dedicated left turn lane um, and you want to use a permissive turn that's how you would uh, display the signal head. In this actual example example we do have the signal head displaying R R A G red red amber arrow not G arrow. Um, the idea behind the two reds is if one light bulb is burned out you have the other as a backup. Um, for and then you have your amber and then you have your arrow. So that as long as you start having the four aspects and beyond, you start looking at um, the protected portion of operations that you know that the signal is um, capable and is able to operate protected left turns. Whether it's a protected per, uh, protected permissive, protected then switches to permissive or fully protected. Typically, standard practice is when you start having dual um, left turns is to have them as fully protected movement. And that is to improve the overall safety at the intersection. So I know um, because it's dual left turns and we can confirm that, of course, using the plan, signal timing plan, that this is a protected turn and this is the southbound, but also is a protected turn. Um, also east-west, also dual, so it, and it has the four aspects. It's likely it's uh, protected left turn, uh, left turn as well uh, for either directions. Very similar to what we did in the auto example, if you look at the push buttons, we have only one. We don't have two. And this guy is likely telling us to cross Country Hills Boulevard. So if you want to cross Country Hills Boulevard, you want to push the button. And that means 
that your east-west is the main approach. And that's only information I'm getting uh, from looking at the signal itself or from the street view. Now, let's go to the signal itself and see how um, uh, the, uh, one of the templates that Calgary used to do uh, to have um, displayed um, signals uh, or how signal operates or summarizes signal information. So in this very particular example, um, when you get the um, signal timing summary, it will tell you the location, the day that this has been quoted. This is quite an old example, so it's um, likely not uh, relevant anymore. Uh, but uh, yeah, the information, the technical information to have to read timing times is all the same, so that does not change. Um, it will tell you the intersection number in the city and it will tell you which movements are protected, which ones are protected permissive, which ones are permissive only. When you look at the timing plan, it will give you the timing plan number, of course, the cycle length, the offset, offset zero, and um, CNA, coordinated non-actuated. Um, when, you, when you start looking at this and then seeing it, that means the signal is likely coordinated with itself. Like it's not in a uh, coordinated system or a series of systems. Um, and it, it's, it has an offset of zero. And the idea behind that is likely, and this particular, um, I would expect in this particular example, is that the idea is to whenever there is not much time, or uh, there is, um, you've served the demand from other phases, but there is a little bit still time that can be passed on to the main phase, you would actually pass that to the main phase. So that's the idea of why in some uh, areas you see um, signals coordinated but they're not really coordinated with anything they're coordinated against some sort of cycle clock of zero so don't and that helps what if you have um, heavy demand east west um, it, it really helps you pass the time there when you don't uh, need it elsewhere um, it tells you the starting time of the plan it starts at 6 a.m so that's an a.m uh, peak plan and that's 9 a.m and again, CNA coordinated, not actuated. That means that um, the signal is assuming that the east-west is programmed as a non-actuated phase. Well, it may have detection in the field, it may not. But whether it has or doesn't have, during this timing plan, the controller is assuming that this does not have detection, I'm going to pass it. Or I'm going to operate the full time for that phase, east-west, and any unused time in this very specific uh, example will get passed on to east-west. So you can program your signal that way. Of course, that's a little bit deep into the uh, background of into the signal operation, uh, but it's good to understand how the signal operates so you can program it correctly uh, when you get to the BSIM stage. So it's telling us um, it has a maximum of 37 seconds of green, a, an amber of four seconds, and a red time of three seconds. The pedestrian phase is an eight seconds of walk time plus 27 seconds of flash don't walk time. This signal in the east-west direction is not actuated and that's why you'll see a dash in the men if actuated. After you serve the east-west, you'll, and, this, and, and the reason the city um, started with east-west, that's where the coordination starts. So um, that's the first phase you want to display. Otherwise, it's free that full cycle that keeps repeating on and on again. So you'll move on to the north-south. The minimum is seven seconds, so that is actuated. If there is, a so if there is one car, this uh, turn or both turns or either of the turns will operate a minimum of seven seconds, up to nine and a half seconds if there is another vehicle behind it, for example. So it can imp uh, increase the, uh, the phase length by another two and a half seconds from its minimum, um, followed by three and a half seconds of amber time and one second of red time. This will be followed on by an actuated north-south phase with a minimum time of 10 seconds. If, you've, if you'll get the pedestrian actuation, a 16 second window will be added to that so you can operate the pedestrian movement safely. So you can operate the full eight seconds plus 18 seconds safely and you'll find that 8 plus 18 of course is 26 um, so that operates up to the full green followed by clearances after that you'll get into serving east west uh, left turns with a minimum of seven seconds and you can actuate that up to 14 and a half seconds um, 
you do getting a three seconds of yellow time and one second of red time. The same concept applies uh, when you get to um, other uh, patterns of day. So um, moving into pattern two, east west coordinated phase coordinated at zero, um, and this plan is between nine and uh, three thirty p.m. Um, you will start here seeing the the plans vary depending, of course, on demand. So um, we've allowed here, for example, the southbound left to actuate between seven seconds and fourteen and a half seconds. So northbound left will be terminated at nine and a half seconds with a yellow of three and a half and one second friend red. But during that termination time, your southbound left is, is going on for another five seconds, um, and with that, you, of course, you can operate the southbound through. Um, this will be followed by three and a half seconds and one second uh, clearance for the southbound left. And then, so this is the five second here is the delay, the gap between the northbound and southbound traffic operation. Um, so the southbound phase through phase will have an extra five second on top of the 26 seconds that's assigned to north-south operations. Followed by, of course, um, the typical amber and clear uh, red um, requirements. And finally, east-west um, left turns at 11, up to 11 and a half seconds of actuation with a minimum of seven and clear uh, amber and uh, red time and so on and so forth. So that's how you read a signal timing plan. In the next um, video, I'll be showing the um, how you would be programming this into vSUN, uh, but we'll be simplifying things a little bit. We'll be coding or programming it using uh, ring value controller, but we'll be, for the sake of simplicity, assuming a fixed timing plan, more or less. So we'll be maxing everything out. Um, but yeah, that is about it for today.